Pertama teknik alat report, pengambilan data dan analisis data fotosintesis, water efficiency dan transpirasi. Uh, di sini uh, saya sebagai MC dan juga moderator akan membantu acara pada kesempatan uh, kali ini. Uh, Alhamdulillah uh, di sini sudah uh, banyak yang hadir, Bapak Ibu baik di uh, di, uh, di ruangan sidang satu dan dua. Departemen Agronomina Kultura dan juga Bapak Ibu di uh, Zoom, mudah-mudahan uh, <tuh> selalu uh, sehat. Baik, Bapak Ibu pertama uh, kita akan menyanyikan lagu Indonesia Raya dan Tinggi PB uh, sebagai pembukaan. Silakan Pak Mas Eko. <tuh> Selamat 
datang, Bapak Adaryatmo. Terima kasih, terima kasih. Dan Bapak Ibu semua yang telah hadir di uh, ruang Zoom maupun ruang sidang untuk pertemuan dan pembicaraan kultural. Uh, perkenalkan uh, kami uh, mengundang uh, Ibu Dokter Eni Wida Jati uh, sekaligus untuk membuka uh, acara pembicaraan hari ini. Selamat uh, pagi. Terima kasih Pak Dede. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi dan salam sejahtera untuk kita semua. Puji syukur hari ini uh, kita di Departemen Agronomi dan Perkebunan bisa melaksanakan uh, webinar dalam bentuk fintech yang ketujuh. Pada kesempatan ini uh, kami menyampaikan permohonan maaf bahwa uh, Dekan Fakultas Pertanian Prof. Suryo Wiono dan Ketua Departemen Agronomi dan Hortikultura Prof. Edi Santoso uh, sedang ada kegiatan yang lain sehingga mungkin nanti akan uh, menyusul uh, di webinar kali ini. Pada kesempatan ini juga kami menyampaikan ucapan terima kasih Uh, dari University Putra Malaysia Bapak Dr. Muhammad Nasim bin Zafar kemudian uh, ada Bapak Toh Tiang Su dan Bapak Muhammad Afif bin Kamar Sali juga kepada uh, PT Unitama Analitika Perkasa kami ucapkan kepada Bapak Kinsu Kinti Bapak Rahmat Reza, kemudian ini itu ya, Bapak juga, Bapak Ilhami Mufti Arif ya. Terima kasih eh, pada kesempatan ini akan sharing terkait dengan penggunaan alat record dengan topik webinar hari ini adalah teknik alat record pengambilan data dan analisis data fotosintesis water use, efisiensi, dan transpirasi. Uh, terima kasih juga kepada uh, hadirin yang ada di Zoom. Uh, Mudah-mudahan uh, bintang kesempatan ini terkait dengan penggunaan alat record yang kita tahu semua bahwa di dalam penelitian bidang pertanian saya kira alat tersebut memang uh, sangat penting untuk mendukung data terkait proses-proses uh, fisiologi, proses metabolisme di dalam tanaman yang uh, kita bisa menganalisis lebih mendalam terkait dengan uh, <tuh> produksi maupun juga saya kira bermanfaat juga bagi rekan-rekan yang bekerja di bidang uh, breeding atau pemulihan tanaman. Oleh karena itu, kesempatan yang sangat baik ini barangkali kita bisa manfaatkan secara detail. Nanti Bapak Dr. Muhammad Nasmin akan menyampaikan terkait ada lecture-nya, kemudian juga nanti kami di Offline ini kita juga sudah menyiapkan uh, alat ikonnya, jadi nanti akan disampaikan juga bagaimana penggunaan secara praktis alat tersebut. Mudah-mudahan walaupun diikutinya secara daring, uh, itu juga akan uh, bisa dipahami secara baik. Sebetulnya kita mengharapkan juga di ruang sidang ini ada uh, mahasiswa yang akan atau dosen maupun mahasiswa yang akan menggunakan likor ini bisa hadir secara uh, luring begitu sehingga akan lebih memahami dan diskusinya juga akan lebih uh, mendalam saya kira namun demikian tidak mengurangi uh, kesempatan ini uh, Bapak Ibu bisa juga menggunakan uh, media dengan Zoom meeting yang telah kami siapkan, mudah-mudahan Bapak Ibu bisa uh, menerima uh, kuliah maupun praktik yang akan kita laksanakan hari ini. Uh, saya kira tidak 
akan panjang lebar supaya uh, kuliah maupun praktek terkait dengan alat liter ini uh, bisa dijelaskan secara mendalam apabila nanti ada hal-hal yang uh, mungkin perlu ditanyakan saya kira uh, di sini Dr. Muhammad Nasmi dan tim teknis dari PT Unitama Analitika Perkasa siap untuk membantu Bapak Ibu untuk konsultasi hari ini maupun untuk uh, selanjutnya karena kali nanti uh, Bapak Ibu ada di institusinya ada yang tertarik untuk menggunakan likor saya kira bisa uh, apa, menanyakan lebih detail bagaimana teknis penggunaan alat likor tersebut maupun bagaimana uh, memelihara alatnya supaya bisa digunakan dengan uh, baik kalau menur menurut Pak Mas Min tadi alatnya harus sehat katanya tadi ya jadi alat itu tidak perlu check up dan sebagainya jadi silakan uh, Bapak Ibu yang saat ini memiliki likor atau mungkin nanti akan membeli alat likornya saya kira bisa berkonsultasi lebih uh, lanjut baik saya kira uh, tidak panjang lebar webinar kali ini akan kita buka di sebelah Terima kasih Pak Dedan, semoga uh, webinarnya bermanfaat. Uh, baik, terima kasih Bu Dr. Eni, Pak uh, Ustaz Departemen Agung dan Kultura. Baik, kita akan melanjutkan ke acara ini dari uh, webinar ini. Ya, ya, dan juga mungkin nanti, nanti ada demonstrasi ya dari uh, Bapak Dr. Muhammad Najmi Yapa. Uh, beliau merupakan uh, senior lecturer dari Department of Cross Science University Putra Malaysia. Uh, beliau menamatkan uh, S1 di UGM di Agricultural Science dan uh, PhD di Rice Physiology di University of Sheffield, uh, UK. Uh, berbagai penelitian dan juga uh, risetnya dilai oleh beliau yang uh, semuanya di bidang uh, fisiologi mungkin bapak ibu bisa nanti lihat di uh, Google Scholar beliau untuk uh, tentang terkait dengan uh, aspek penelitian yang beliau sudah lakukan hingga saat hingga saat ini uh, mungkin uh, nanti uh, Pak Dr Nasmi uh, akan menyampaikan bisa dalam dalam bahasa Inggris atau dalam bahasa Melayu dan juga Bapak Ibu semua juga bisa berinteraksi uh, melalui Zoom ini jika ada hal-hal yang ditanyakan uh, ke beliau mengenai tentang misalkan tadi uh, tentang fisiologi dan penghubungan penggunaan likon ini yang mungkin uh, di tempat seperti Bapak Ibu sudah ada tapi mungkin masih kurang jelas pemanfaatannya lebih uh, optimal seperti itu Mungkin lanjut langsung saja ya kepada Bapak Ibu semuanya uh, kita dengarkan uh, kuliah atau lecture dari Bapak Dr. Muhammad Najib uh, Yapa. Silakan. <tuh> Saya boleh bangun ke kamar mana? Boleh. Boleh. Slide-nya? Di... Saya boleh nampak slide ke? Uh, Oke. Okay. Saya, Saya boleh bangun lagi. <tuh> Ini sudah sudah on. Uh, Oke, okay. terima kasih atas pengenalan. Uh, jadi uh, saya tak buang masa. Okay, saya akan terus sampaikan. Jadi acara ini ada dua bahagian. Kita ada bahagian uh, kuliah, lecture dan juga bahagian uh, demonstrasi. Tapi mungkin dalam masa yang sama mungkin ada sedikit hybrid overlap sebab kita nak tunjukkan um, alatan itu. Jadi saya saya sampaikan kuliahnya dalam bahasa Inggeris uh, supaya mungkin tidak ada masalah bahasa di situ. Takut nanti bahasa Malaysia ni orang orang Indonesia kurang faham. Okey. Uh, let's see. Saya Kenapa? Oh, connection ni hilang.
Oke. Okay. Oh, tukar. Uh, jadi ini boleh dengar. Oke. Okay. Um. Okay. Saya cuba ni sekejap ya. Eh. Dia tembak mana ni? Kiri kanan. Dia macam tak ke depan. Ke depan. Delay. Delay. Okey. Connection tadi tak tidak stable. <tuh> Tapi dia bergerak tak? Oh, okey okey okey. Delay delay delay. Okey. Uh, so um, today we're going to, to look at um, three equipment today. So pardon for the delayed response on the slides um, on the screen at the moment. Um, so we, we are very lucky and fortunate today because um, Pertanika Unitama Prakasa, that's such a long name for, for a company. They are very generous um, to share with us the equipment pertaining to plant physiology for the sake of demonstration today. So um, I'm going to start with, mungkin bapak boleh tolong ke depan kan? Okay. So um, I'm going to give some, maybe I, I don't want to call it introduction, maybe we call it revision about photosynthesis because I'm very sure that many people at some point in their life, they have actually learned photosynthesis but the, the depth of photosynthesis, the detail of it might be overwhelming sometimes, unclear, or it gets tangled up in, in, in various ways, right? So we're going to have a look at the revision of photosynthesis. Then I'm going to introduce three equipment but, um, that can be used extensively to study photosynthesis. So we have the Lyco 180, which is the spectrometer. That's the little black guy on the far left. And right in the middle, we have the LI60. Oh, sorry. In the middle here is LI600, which is the spectro, um, porometer, fluorometer. And finally, we have the most expensive of them all, which is the LI6800 the portable photosynthesis. I think many, many, many of plant physiologists are more um, familiar with the older version, the older generation of uh, 6400. Okay. Um, right. So, Undoubtedly, photosynthesis is the most fundamental process on this planet, on planet Earth, without which life is out of questions. Because it is the very process that joins in raw materials that can be found on this planet and turn it into something useful, something of essence to be used by all organisms on the planet. Okay? So, so what, what, what I have on the slide here, this is the cross-section of a leaf, a typical leaf, and it looks very busy. So in the leaf, there are various types of cells. So those cells that actually do photosynthesis, we call them as mesophyll cells. And the mesophyll cells itself have two types, the palisade and um, spongy mesophyll. So I would like to take you into a journey way into the cell itself. When you go into the cell, let's zoom in and look. What is the kingdom inside the cell? Because this is where the photosynthesis takes place. Okay. So in the plant cells, this green thing it looks, it looks, it looks like, like some kind of um, ball, right? That's a chloroplast. So chloroplast is one of the many organelles that are present in the uh, plant cells. We have a nucleus, we have mitochondria, and 
some other organelles. But today, we're going to focus just on the chloroplast. So for the chloroplast, um, when we take a cross-section of it, there is a further division inside the chloroplast itself, the anatomy of the chloroplast. And this is very important because the process of photosynthesis happens in various locations inside the chloroplast itself. We know that the chloroplast itself is super small, ultra structure, but inside of it, there is something even smaller. And this is where the photosynthesis takes place. Maju Bapak. Right. <clears throat> okay, so, so on the slide here, it, it shows you on the far left, that is the journey of CO2, okay? So we all know that photosynthesis requires ingredients and the primary ingredients are CO2, water, some nutrients, and also light, okay? So the CO2 will have to travel from the outside of the leaf, that is the picture over here, and then it has to somehow go through various membranes and also walls before it can reach a chloroplast. So the reason I'm showing you this diagram here to show you it is not a linear or simple way for the CO2 that we have in abundance surrounding us to reach chloroplast. If the CO2, carbon dioxide, does not able to reach the chloroplast, no photosynthesis would have occurred. But the journey itself is very difficult. You can see there are many cells that it has to go through. There are many membranes that it has to go through. Then it also needs to change phase from the gaseous phase into the liquid phase and then gets into the chloroplast here, right? So once the CO2 is in the chloroplast with some light, water and nutrient, Photosynthesis can start to happen. But, what do you want? Let's see um, the locations inside the chloro chloroplast itself. So in the chloroplast, um, it is divided into the photosystem structure and also the biochemical um, part of it. So the thing that you look like a stacking of um, uh, structure here. This is called the granum, and this is this thing. Each single disc is where the light reaction of photosynthesis takes place. This is you can regard it as the antenna for light. This is the solar capture for the chloroplast, right? And just outside the granum here, you will have. Um, the surrounding environment, the soup, I would like to call it a soup, inside the chloroplast. And this is the second part of the photosynthesis happens, which is the production of sugar. So it's very important to understand that photosynthesis is never linear and the process, the reaction that takes place happens in a specific compartment. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So this is the basic of photosynthesis. Do understand that the reactions in photosynthesis is divided into two. Hence the name photosynthesis. The photo means the light reactions, which happens on the grana here. And with the light dependent reactions, we get products. And this is the important products, namely the ATP and also the NDPH. So what are these two molecules? So ATP is the energy currency for all cells, not only in plants, but in humans as well. And also the NADPH. This is um, electron donor. So whenever this molecule is passing around, it is able to donate some of its electron okay, to those who are in it. And 
these reaction also have byproduct and oxygen is the byproduct and this is the thing that we breathe in for our um, uh, own livelihood right so that's the first part of the photosynthesis for the second part is the kelvin cycle this part do does not require light specifically directly but it requires the light reactions to get atp and ndph so that the cycle the kelvin cycle for these reactions can happen and this is the reaction where we get the sugar right so just a quick recap the first part of photosynthesis to gather energy in two forms namely atp and nadph for the second part of photosynthesis the energy from the first part will be used to synthesize the sugar right the glucose that we usually know right maju maju apa oh okay oh, sorry okay so this is um this is the the the, the summary of it um, whatever that i just said just now so we have light reactions we got nadp h and atp and then kelvin cycle will use it up so you can understand now why it is important to understand the photosynthesis based on the reactions because for example at least for the products that we have from from lyco here today both reactions can be measured separately or simultaneously right um is it is it possible untuk kamera tunjuk ke machine yeah all right all right so for for the purpose of our demonstration today we are going to focus on the light how to measure light that is perceived by the chloroplast so that it can generate all this energy for the production of kelvin cycle right so we have the first um, equipment here which is um what's the parameter this equipment here yep so this equipment here it's called porometer fluorometer this equipment will specifically um boleh maju apa maju ke depan satu okay yeah oh sorry not this one um that yeah we we, we all know that light is one of the ingredient in photosynthesis right so in order to energize the whole photosystem the correct amount of light the correct quality of light needs to be present for the photosystem otherwise the end product the atp and nadph is not going to materialize so this equipment that i'm holding um, my my hand here this is spectrometer to measure is the light enough and is the light correct so i think many many of us agronomists in agriculture we need to understand one thing about light light has a dual properties so you need to measure light in the in the sense of is the quality correct and also is the quantity correct so when i talk about light quality that is referring to the color like in here the color so we know that um, sunlight has so many color but not color is um, going to be used for photosynthesis and then also the light quantity the number of light particles that the photosystem perceive so when these two things are correct then the first part of photosynthesis will happen in the right manner right so for the second equipment here this is actually to measure the fluorometer here how much light is captured by the photosystem if you're referring to the slide light capture is one thing but does it use the light or not so this machine will also tell you that as well how much light is captured by the leaf 
and then after it has captured, does it use to produce ATP or an NDPH? So there's two things there, maximum quantum yield and also the efficient quantum yield, right? <coughs> okay, boleh maju apa? Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is the quick recap of what I just said just now. So light quantity, light quality, and also the, the period of the light. So this is very important. M much of the agronomist or agriculturists that I have dealt with, horticulturists, they kind of missed these points, all right? So these need to be given a proper um, amount of attention because it's an ingredient of photosynthesis, right? So it, you have to get it right, right? <clears throat> So you might wonder if you look at the light quantity on the slide, at the bottom it says micromole. Yes, uh, this machine here, all the machine today that we have from Lyco here can measure the number of light particles. It's very small, you cannot see it, but the sensor of the machine can, can actually tell how many are actually in presence, right? Okay, so boleh maju. Yeah. So this is about um, this machine here, this, this, this piece of equipment. So we talk about how much light has been captured. But what about the captured light? What does it do in the, in the cell? Does it do something or otherwise? So this is the study of fluorescence. Okay. The fluorescence actually, simply put, is the measure of glow in the dark of the leaf. In the ideal world, wherever the leaf has managed to absorb, it uses it all. But leaf is not a perfect system. Some amount of light is actually released back to the atmosphere because the plant just cannot deal everything at once. Yeah. For example, um, you might have 10 plates of fried rice in front of you but you are only able to eat maybe five. So what happened to the five? So these five needs to be returned to, 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 to some place, right? So your capacity is only to eat five plates of rice. So that is the um, maximum quantum efficiency, which regularly in fluorescence is known as FV over FM. Yeah. The second measure, which is on the right, on, this, on, the, uh, on the slide, which is phi PS2. Phi is the Greek letter, okay? <coughs> phi PS2. Out of these five plates of rice that you have ingested or consumed, how much actually turn into your energy that your body can use? So that is the equivalent analogy for this situation here. So the light that has been absorbed by the leaf, does it do the job to produce energy or not? So this machine here measure it in the form of 5 PS2, the efficiency of the um, quantum absorbed. Right. Okay. Um, right. Okay. What about the second part of photosynthesis? So that would be the Kelvin cycle. Now remember your um, at the beginning, I told you about the location of the chloroplast. For the light ration, it happens on the photos, photosystem, the thylakoid, the thylakoid membrane. Now we move to the second location in the chloroplast, which is the stroma, the soup surrounding in the chloroplast. So in the soup, another biochemical reaction happens, and this is popularly known as the Kelvin cycle, right? Look at the name, the Kelvin cycle, meaning that it is a cycle. It is not a linear process. Because it is a cycle, it needs energy. This is why light reaction is very important. The energy acquired from the first part of the photosynthesis will be used to energize the second reactions uh, for the Kelvin cycle. There's a question here. Bagaimana perbedaan photosynthesis antara Um I will answer that after we finish that because that is more about uh, the structure of the leaf. Okay. Can you jot down so that I don't forget the question just now? 
Thank you. Um, just ask the question on the chat. Apparently, ada chat ya. Boleh di, uh, yeah. uh, boleh kumpul nanti. Uh, saya jawab di hujung. Boleh ya? Okay. So, Kelvin cycle. It is a cycle. It requires energy. We do the cycling using bicycle. We also need energy. So, the energy is provided by the first part of photosynthesis. So, the Kelvin cycle itself, it comprises three phases. Namely, the stage one, the carbon fixation, and then moves to the reduction, and then regeneration. Yeah. For the equipment from LICO, it specifically measures the first part of Kelvin cycle, which is the carbon fixation. And that job is done by this machine here. <clears throat> can you turn this so that the camera can see? So this machine is called LI6800. Actually, you can just um, flip the screen. Yeah. Right. My student is very nervous. Yeah. Super, super nervous. Yeah. One moment they are in Malaysia, in KL. Now they are in Bogo. <laughs> right. So this machine here, it measures the first part of the Kelvin cycle, which is the carbon fixation. On the screen, it is denoted as A. A stands for assimilation. And look at the unit. Micromole per square meter per second. Micromole of what? Micromole of CO2. How much CO2 is fixed into the system for a given area per mm. second? Right. So now you can understand. If you have a happy and healthy photosystem, it will only make this cycle to go faster and faster. And what is the consequence? The moment you have that, you will start to have your sugar precursor. You see, glucose is not manufactured directly out of Kelvin cycle. The first sugar precursor actually happens in the second part of Kelvin cycle, which is the reduction of 3PGA. PGA stands for phosphoglycerate. Okay. <clears throat> so maybe I, I can um, briefly tell you what's going on here with the Kelvin cycle here. Okay, so we have our ingredient of photosynthesis, the other ingredient of photosynthesis, which is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide will combine with the five carbon sugar, ribulose bisphosphate, five carbon sugar, which is already present in the chloroplast. Okay, don't ask, it came from where? It's already there. So this five carbon sugar combines with CO2 with the help of special enzyme called Rubisco. So Rubisco kind of like the matchmaker. You've got a, one couple here, one couple there, joined together. So it joins together, but this molecule is unstable. Immediately, it will split into two, producing this um, PGA, phosphoglycerate, three phosphoglycerate. It only has one phosphate attached to it, okay? And then this will be converted with the help of ATP. You see here, where does it come from? From the light cycle earlier, the light reaction earlier, right? So, and then with the addition of hydrogen to this phosphoglycerate, it now will become reduced, meaning that it has extra hydrogen to it. And eventually it will become this sugar precursor that we all know about. GA3P, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, or some books call it triose phosphate. Okay, different names, just synonym. It's the same thing. Three carbon sugar. So two times of this three carbon sugar, you will get your glucose, right? What about this regeneration of RUBP? You see? Um, Math mathematically, this Kelvin cycle is very smart. It knows if it simply fix one molecule of RUBP and one molecule of CO2, it will stop here. It cannot go further. So the cycle actually happens simultaneously to fix three molecules of 
RUBP and three molecule of carbon dioxide. All right? <clears throat> Maybe I can I can do some some mathematics to to, sh to show you how, how does it work. So in the carbon fixation, carbon fixation. Oops, has it not? Um, I don't think you can see it. Do you have marker, marker, marker? Um, one minute, we're going to find a marker. Um, oh, maybe can, uh, oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. right. It's carbon fixation. Yeah, so um, for the Kelvin cycle, this Kelvin cycle, if this cycle is only fixed, is only fixing one time of RUBP plus one times of CO2, this is going to be linear. No extra. So in reality, in reality, what happens is three times of RUBP go together with three times of CO2. So to produce um, six molecules of phosphor, three phosphor grease red. In terms of carbon, RUBP is five carbon. So in here, three times five, you got 15 carbon. Three times one carbon of CO2, you got three carbon. Okay, so in total here, you got 18 carbons. At the end of reduction phase, like I said earlier, one molecule of G3P will exit. See here, one molecule of GA3P will exit. Meaning that at the end of reduction, <clears throat> 18 carbon minus Three carbon. Three carbon is the G, G3P because this one exit. So what is left is 15 carbon of molecules. From where? From five molecule of this thing. G3P. Remember, okay, this thing does not exit. Only this thing exit. This thing continue with the cycle. So from this 15 carbon, the cycle rearranges the molecules from this 15 carbon of five molecules of G3P, they change it into three molecules of um, RUBP. And we know that RUBP is five carbon, five times three, you, you got back your 15 carbon. So that's, that's, that's um, in, in short, that's how it works. Okay, just a small warning. I have simplified it super simple. In reality, if you learn physiology in, the, in depth, there are 10 steps here. From here to here, there are 10 steps. Involving enzymes name, even I cannot pronounce. So difficult. All right, okay, All right. Boleh uh, maju So that's the Kelvin cycle which is uh, measured by this uh, equipment here. Um, apa lagi? Ke depan. All right. <coughs> mm, mm, mm. Okay, okay. Sabar ya dengan soalannya. All right. So, um, with, with, that, with that in mind, the, the capability of the Lyco 6800, it is not only to measure the photosynthesis on the spot. You can actually measure photosynthesis at various light concentration. With this information, you just produce what we call as response curve. Why is response curve important? So that you know the identity of the leaf that you are working with because in nature, leaves 
are categorized based on the light requirement into sun leaf and also shade leaf. And these two leaves are different biochemically and also structurally. Right. So let's say that with this equipment here, see, this is the, the equipment that you saw earlier. Clam your leaf, do the photosynthesis, and play around with the amount of light that this plant receives. The moment you create this, you can understand that, oh, this curve actually has two phases. The first phase and the second phase. And then the first phase, you know that up to this light point, around 300 micromole, at least for this plant, the light is limiting, right? So how does this relate to agriculture? Now you know that after you have produced a number of these, you can see that some plants actually have a shorter light limited region. This is around 300. Maybe you have plants that stops the first phase of light response curve at 250. So plants that have high um, light use efficiency, usually they have a good nitrogen use efficiency as well, right? So maybe you want to increase your efficiency of your plant. This, you can use this to decide, should I add more nitrogen to the soil? Because we know nitrogen is used to make chlorophyll complex. Rubisco enzyme. Chlorophyll complex is meant for the photosystem to capture the light. So when the plant is able to capture more light, more energy will be produced. If the plant uses nitrogen to make more Rubisco, more CO2 is fixed. Therefore, you got more sugar. Right. So the capability of this equipment is very, very extensive. Okay. You can go very, very deep about it, right? Okay, can I find? Yeah. So for the question, um, this is, um, I got from Paidi. He asked me to, to talk a bit about trans transpiration uh, and water use efficiency. Another ingredient of photosynthesis, which is water. <clears throat> what about water? Um, even though water is abundance around us, um, I would call it ubiquitous as well. It's, it's present everywhere. But not all water are readily available for the plants. Okay, So transpiration is the process of plants using, losing water through the actions of stomatal opening. You see, on, the, on a piece of leaf, on the surface, you have all these pores of food, um, that can allow gas exchange. And since water can also present in the form of vapor, which is gas, so water can actually exit from the leaf. There are a few number of um, transpiration types. So today we are focusing on the stomatal transpiration, meaning that the exit of water through um, stomata. Yeah. If you are struggling to understand stomata, think of it like a sweating. You know, human, we are sweating, right? You go play football or something, you are sweating. Why, why human are sweating? To cool down, right? So it's the same purpose for the plant. But for plants, that's another function of transpiration. To pull nutrient from the root all the way up. Some trees are very tall. For example, like the, the tree, the um, sequoia trees in, in, um, in uh, America. That is as tall as 120 meters. That tree hasn't got any pump, hasn't got any heart. So how come the water from the ground to reach all the way 120 meter up? Yeah. So one of the mechanism that the plants use to pull water all the way up is through transpiration, right? So um, transpiration, this is the regular transpiration that we see. This transpiration in the regular sense um, it's simply about the evaporation, okay? So I'm telling you this so that you are aware. There are better ways than transpiration to, to talk about water loss in plants, okay? But if you take into account the action of stomata 
into the equation of um, transpiration, you see? Transpiration got its own equation. But when you talk about the stomata, specifically transpiration due to stomata, the measure is actually more accurate, okay? Because stomata comes in various forms, various density. So using another parameter called stomatal conductance will give you a better understanding of how is your leaf water balance. Is it good or otherwise? Because in drought condition, you know, when there's not so much water around, it is important for the plants to close stomata. And we need to know whether the plants are closing stomata at the right time or not. So this is another side of the breeding actually that people are into. They call it micro breeding. They breed for the variety, for example, rice variety with correct stomatal size and arrangement. Because rice with the correct stomata, not only that they manage to preserve water in the plant successfully, but also to facilitate CO2 in and out of the tissue very, very efficiently. Right, Maju? Yeah, yeah. So from the stomata, because we, we want to understand about the water exiting the cells, so we can understand, is the plant efficient in terms of water use? So regularly, Traditionally, in physiology, people use this, water use efficiency, simply by having the assimilation value divided by transpiration. But again, I would like things to be more specific. Maybe um, you want to understand transpiration at your leaf level. So for that, there's another measure of water use efficiency, which is called intrinsic water use efficiency. In the formula, you divide assimilation with the stomatal conductance that you saw earlier. So when you understand this, we can understand for one molecule of CO2 fixed, how many molecules of water that is lost? Yeah, because stomata, when it opens, not only CO2 that gets in, water also can get out. Oxygen can also get out. Okay, so the plants needs to balance this. Should I open more? Should I open halfway? Or should I not open at all? Right, if, if the plants do not open somata, can the photosynthesis happen? Pretty much not very, very, very happening, right? So the plants need, need to make a good decision and have a better control of stomata. So intrinsic water use efficiency is one parameter that you can use, which can be obtained by the CC. 800 LiCo as well. All right, uh, Maju? Yeah. So why this is important? Um, yeah, understanding all this stomata, because it's very small. Right? Nobody really pay attention to stomata. Stomata actually one of the components contributing to water cycle and also the carbon cycle uh, for, for our atmosphere. Uh, okay. So for example, I've got a um, simple um, graph here. Got the time here in second, and also the stomatal conductance. Yeah. So you can see that, for example, we got plants here, uh, soy. What soy in, in Indonesia? Kedelai. Kedelai. Kedelai is mule. No, don't go there. Kedelai. 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 Okay. Jauh bunyinya dari soya. Macam mana S lompat ke K? Uh, so the the kedelai bean experiment. So in the morning, uh, you can see that the stomata is rather not opening very very much because it is um, um, the light is still not as bright. Okay, so the photosynthesis it's warming up. Yeah. But when you go mid morning, what to do, ha? Huh? It gets warmer, right? Look at the stomata here. It will. It is a lot higher. Okay. So the opening of the stomata 
which is reflected in the measure of stomatal conductance is pro uh, proportionately with the activity of photosynthesis. The more the stomata open, like this, the more CO2 that can get in. So the more CO2 can get in, the more sugar that can be produced by the Kelvin cycle. And also not only that actually, also to release uh, oxygen. You see oxygen, when it's too much in the leaf, it's accumulating that kind of toxic to the leaf. So the plants need to release all the oxygen out so that you can use it, you can breathe, okay? So what happened um, for the um, tobacco in the midday? Same time, which is mid-morning, midday, more or less the same, but you can see that tobacco, since it is different species, the stomatal conductors are actually a lot higher. So by definition, we can make a quick um, hypothesis that the growth between two plants, tobacco and soy, tobacco should be much faster in terms of growth. Even I, I don't have to go and look at the uh, plants in the field. Just looking at the physiological data like this, we can already know this plant is actually growing lots faster. Just look at the stomatal conductance. It's opening the, the stomatal pore like crazy, right? Yeah. So, yeah, so this is, um, stomata is one of the um, small things under physiology and agriculture, which is of, often overlooked, okay? But if you pay good attention to it, for example, like doing the microbreeding that I mentioned earlier, something tremendous can be uh, resulting out of it. All right, okay, maju pak. Maju ke hadapan. All right, okay, all right. Itu sahaja untuk uh, revision uh, fotosintesisnya. Jadi saya tengok tadi ada soalan kan? Jadi kita boleh jawab soalan. Apa soalan? Ya. Baik. Uh, terima kasih. Kita yang sudah uh, memaparkan kuliah kita hari ini. Mungkin uh, uh, jika Bapak Ibu langsung uh, bisa menanyakan langsung ya sambil menentukan yang di project. Sekarang Bapak Ibu, jika ada yang langsung ditanyakan, bisa ISN dan uh, langsung menyampaikan uh, pada di, di forum ini. Silakan Bapak Ibu. Mungkin boleh bacakan soalan yang dalam chat tadi. Apa dia tanya? Ya, yang pertama ya. ada tiga. Apa? Uh, bagaimana perbedaan fotosintesis pada tanaman C3, C4 dan C4 yang tadi Oke. Oke. Jadi, eh saya jawab siapa? Gris lagi ke? Siapa soalannya dalam bahasa Indonesia? <laughs> <laughs> um, saya jawab bahasa Inggeris saya Campur-campur, uh, tadi apa? Katanya gaduh-gaduh Campur-campur <laughs> Jangan gaduh, gaduh-gaduh Okay um, uh, Perbezaan The difference between Three types of photosynthesis Namely C3, C4 And CAM Most of the plants on planet Earth Are C3 plants Why? Because the first product of carbon fixation, C3, that you saw earlier, which is phosphoglycerate. For C4 plants, the first product of carbon fixation is for carbon, which is malate or uh, oxalate. Okay. For CAM plant, kind of similar with um, uh, C4 plants, but the timing is different. You see, the problem with C3 plants, during the uh, afternoon time, the plants experiencing uh, photorespiration. Okay, photorespiration is metabolically wasteful process. The plant is just trying to save itself. It is not doing anything. It's just consuming energy without no sugar product at the end. It's not like photosynthesis. You have, you use energy, but you got sugar. Photorespiration, you don't have it. So C3 plant, it has this problem. So some plants, especially plants originating from Mexico, Brazil, the good example for this will be corn or maize, has evolved a new type of photosynthesis. It separates the carbon fixation into separate cells. So um, I don't have the picture here. 
um, but I can um, just imagine this way. For C4 plants, there are two compartments, two cells that do photosynthesis. For C3 plant, only one cell. Kevin cycle happening all in one cell. But for C4 plants, the first part of Kevin cycle, which is the uh, carbon fixation, happens in the mesophyll cell first. And then it fixed in the form of four carbon compound called malate or um, um, oxaloacetate. It depends on the species, mostly malate. Okay. So these carbon compounds then move to the second cell, get transferred. Then in the second cell, these four carbon compound will undergo the release and the regular cycle of Kevin cycle. All right. So in this uh, manner, we call it, uh, it's separated by um, special, special um, compartment, space. It is separated by space, sp sp spatial. <coughs> for C4, for camp plant, this is for plants like um, pineapple, cactus. The first product also for carbon for carbon, but it's, it's happening at night, okay? The fixation, it's happening in the same cell, but at night. So pineapple, at night, it will completely open all stomata. It allows all CO2 to get in. The moment CO2 gets into the leaf, it will be fixed into the four carbon product, which is the malate. In the morning, pineapple will completely close the stomata, so no gas can come in. So in the morning, it will do the regular Kelvin cycle as usual. So for the camp plant, it is separated by temporal, by time. To achieve what? Special and temporal this. To achieve what we call as CCM. Carbon concentrating mechanism. For what purpose? This thing. To to fight photorespiration. Yep. Yeah. E to jawab nya. Right. Ah, uh, okay. Ada lagi ada lagi soalan? Hai, eh kapan Prodisco memacu fotosintesis dan kapan memacu fotorespirasi dan apakah ada faktor climate yang pengaruh dengan Prodisco? Saya nak kena proses dulu soalan itu. Ah, mana je? Atas bawah. Eh, hilang. Sekejap ya. Saya kena duduk endon satu tahun baru boleh laju baca. Uh, kapan Rubisco memacu? What is memacu? Trigger. Trigger. Yeah. Trigger. Kapan Rubisco memacu fotosintesis dan kapan memacu fotosintesis? Okay, okay, okay. Senang, senang. Eh, senang. Memang senang. Saya tahu kan. <laughs> um, bukan senang, gampang. Um, Rubisco dia ada, mari kita tengok nama Rubisco. Rubisco itu, dia dikenali sebagai ancient enzyme. Apa ancient dalam bahasa Indon? Lama, kuno, dahulu kala, purba, purba. Purba. Ancient, maksudnya, kita selalu belajar di, di sekolah, in school, we learn that enzyme action is very specific. Key and lock. And then it opens one, right? One key to open one lock. But for the Rubisco, two keys can open one lock. That is the problem. Okay. So the full name for this is Re Ribulos Bisphosphate Carboxylase Oxygenase. Okay. So, nampak? Dia ada dua, dua, two biochemical reactions can be done. Carboxylase reaction and also the oxygenase reaction. So, when does it happen? So, a few things. So, most of the time, it will do the carboxylase reaction. When it does carboxylase reaction, you got your sugar, regular one. When it does your oxygenase, no sugar. So when, when does it do the carboxylase or carboxylation reaction? When CO2 is high, oxygen is low. Number one. 
and when temperature is around 25 degrees Celsius, it will do carboxylation reaction. The opposite of that, when CO2 suddenly drop, oxygen is a lot. For example, when stomata are closed, lots of, oh sorry, lots of uh, oxygen build up. And also when it gets hotter and hotter during afternoon time. When that happens, the enzyme is deaf. Pekak. Dia tak nampak buta dah. Dia tak nampak ni. It will use this. Oxygen extraction. So that's when. But when the, 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 the situation becomes calmer, tenang kembali, rubisco, kembali ke oxygen, uh, carboxylation uh, uh, reaction. Right. Okay. The pengaruh dari climate? Clim yeah, yeah. Uh, climate warmer as it gets warmer, rubisco less reactions per seconds of unit. And rubisco actually there is an enzyme, separate enzyme to activate it. It's called rubisco activase. If suddenly there is a lot of raining, lots of shadow um, cloud overcasting, Rubisco is very difficult to get activated. Okay, so that's why climate change is actually not good for the plants because the plants need to figure out, oh, this is happening. Um, I need to modify my protein and stuff. Yep. Okay. Bagaimana hubungan antara transpirasi dan penyerapan arah? Penyerapan? Nutrien, uh, um, uh, itu cerita jaya. Hmm. Masih nak kena lukis. <coughs> cerita ceritanya senang. Ceritanya ini ada um, tanah. Oh. Kenapa? Problem. 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 <laughs> ah, putus, putus. Mohon maaf, Bapak Ibu, uh, internetnya sedang uh, ter terputus. Uh, mohon uh, menunggu sebentar ya, Bapak Ibu. Tak apa, saya lukis dulu. Eh, duk pakailah benda ni. Hmm. I should have brought my... Uh, Maka. Jauh lah. Aku ambil. Kata dapat A. Siapa yang putus? Kita ke yang putus? Sudah. 
Okey. Jadi saya sambung kembali. Jadi soalannya apa hubung kait antara transpirasi dengan penyerapan nutrien? Okey. <coughs> so nutrients or actually ions ions of elements they are actually dissolved in 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 water originating from the water soil soil water here so soil water so you have all these nutrients in you have you have uh, the ammonium you have the phosphor phosphor uh, phosphoric acid and so on so these are all dissolved in water meaning that as water moves and travel they will follow along Okay, so it is very crucial for the water to be able to go upward. So, transpiration facilitate this movement of water from the bottom of the plant all the way to the top of the plant by the action of water potential. Okay, so um, it's it's kind of it's kind of a lot to talk about water potential. Let's let's put it this way: pure water. The water potential, which is the unit usually megapascal here, pure water H two O, zero megapascal. The moment something is dissolved in the water, the water becomes impure. There, there is this contaminant in the water. It will becomes more negative, more negative. In the example here, so. At the root system, at the tip of the root, the water potential here. Remember, okay, it's not just in the water; it becomes minus two because nutrient has been dissolved in this water. Okay, it will start to move towards a more negative water potential. Loss of water, it moves upward because in the upward region of the plants. The water potential is more negative, so the law is water potential will move to the more negative part of the water. Okay, as you go higher, the water potential is minus five, and at the leaf level, the water potential is minus ten. What about water potential in the atmosphere? That is even more negative. That is minus twenty-five. So the atmospheric water potential actually pulling the water all the way up so as the water go up the nutrients travel as well okay so thank you to respiration okay got it what is the optimal time to collect leaf sample and to measure stomach open oh um collect collect must it kumpul Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe pengamatan, observation. Oh, okay. Time to see okay. the four C3 plants. Sekejap, I need to convert into what to Malaysia jadi what to Indo. Berapa jam is it? Um, because I don't want to say eleven. Sekejap ya. Sebelas Malaysia. Sini berapa? Ten. Okay, okay. Jadi sekitarnya untuk optimum fotosintesis dan juga stomata tata untuk C3 C3 plants jam 7.30 sampai sekitar 11.30 begitu ini waktunya tengah-tengah ini jangan buat apa-apa berhenti sambung kembali to 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 the team Malaysia one to one to I just put put it to as well so sekitar jam Dua sampai jam uh, one, one hour before sunset That should be 16 Just 16.30 Yep Untuk C3 Saya jawab untuk C3 Sebab kebanyakan pokok C3 Right Nampak berhenti ni? Stop, jangan Ini mid the depression Okay Itu waktunya Ada lagi soalan? Ada. Apa itu? Oh, that's the like work mechanism in Britain. Okay. How? Okay. So, I got question from <laughs> Nurfianto. 
how does the LICO work mechanism and its application when used in research? Both how to use it, selecting sample and interpreting it. Oh, ini unit tambah kena buat khusus ni. Hello, no more dua. What is the relationship between the analysis of fertility transfusion water usability with the formation of sucrose such as in sugar cane? Hmm. Um. Okay, macam ni. Untuk soalan pertama itu, like core applications, it's not only for photosynthesis actually. You can use it to to study respiration and also um, the water use efficiency that we, we saw earlier. So, it's going to be very long to answer this one. But the, the advice is actually LICOR, the website LICOR itself, it's very helpful. It's very helpful. So what I suggest you to, to do is to go to the LICOR, specifically the page of this product, and then find the tab there that says resources. Resources. Under the web page of LI6800, and see which one is more relatable to your own um, research. Okay, then you can look at the previous study, which has been done. How it, is it? How is it performed? Right. Okay. And the second one is, what is the relationship between the analysis of photosynthesis transpiration water? Okay. Sugarcane. I think sugarcane is C four plant. Okay. Um. Let's, let's put it this way. With, with LICOR, even though most people use it to measure photosynthesis of C3 plant, it can also be used to study C4 plants. One thing about C4 plants is, we know for sure the, the, lim the limit of carbon fixation has reached the roof due to the, this mechanism, carbon concentrating mechanism. Okay? So when, when you want to study fixation, pretty much usually very minimal difference you're going to find out. All right. However, there is light system that you can improve. Okay. So which is coincident with the demonstration today. Improve the light capture and light use efficiency. So the terminologies that you're looking for is R U E. Radiation, use, efficiency. Okay, so for, for the question here, it asks the relationship of everything about the sugar cane. So sugar cane, we know the carbon mechanism is kind of at the roof because it is a C3, C4 plant. But there is always a room for improvement. So for the room of improvement, go to study RUE because more, more energy is produced by the plants, the more the plants can actually produce other parts of the biomass. Other parts of biomass, not necessarily the harvested part. It can be other organs such as the vascular system and so on, which can help the plant to, example, flowering earlier or having a tougher plant. You know, sometimes some cornfield got hit by typhoon or something, so it's very important to have a stronger plant. So this is needed during the biomass partitioning. Okay. So with all this efficiency improved, can help further biomass uh, accumulation in the correct way. Okay. Okay. It's saja. Yeah. All right. Ini ya, bisa langsung ditanyakan, silakan Bapak Ibu yang ada di Zoom. Apakah ada Bapak Ibu? Atau ada demonstration? Oh, oke. Okay. Oke, okay, kalau ada soalan kita boleh uh, buat demonstration. Uh, 
Atau you ni tamah nak buat? <laughs> Buatlah. Asyik muka. Mu, muka ni je tengok orang macam apa ni. Orang software laptop? Tak. Oh ni Kalau buat boleh cakap bahasa Indonesia. Mungkin mereka lebih. <laughs> ini ini nak bahasa yang sana. <laughs> Nanti saya cakap orang lari. Okay, Anak, Ana. Tak demo saya jawab di tepi-tepi. Takut pula. Siapa siapa nak cakap ni? Okay. Um, so we 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 have um, you need tamak. They are very shy. Super super shy. It's okay, it's okay. So, am I the one that's not shy enough? <laughs> right. So, we have three equipment today, which is the, the first one. This is LI-180. Can you turn this on, please? This is spectrometer. Spectrometer is to measure light spectrum. So, from the light spectrum, two important information that you will get, namely the light quality and also the light quantity. Right. And the second piece of equipment is this um, two, two dual function, parameter slash fluorometer. Parameter, you can use this to study water use efficiency because it gives you the reading of stomatal conductance. For the fluorometer, which is in this same machine as well, you can use it to measure um, uh, photosynthetic efficiency, the phi PS2, meaning that you know the leaf managed to capture what amount of light and then the captured light, what does it do now? Does it do photosynthesis or does it do something else? Okay, so that is this equipment. Um, the main star, the celebrity of this demonstration is actually this thing because you can buy a house with it. <laughs> or maybe three Avanza. More. more, more, actually more, 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 more. Okay, maybe three Innova Kijang. <laughs> very expensive, but because it, it means it's very powerful. Okay, I'll just I'll just tell you uh, about about this this machine. Um, how does it look like? Uh, give give the tour of the machine. Can you push? Careful, careful. So this machine LI sixty eight hundred. This is the new generation of the old. LI6400. I think all of physiologists have worked with the old version of it. So this is a new version, all touch screen. Can you turn it this way, the, the, the screen? Flip it. Um, so this machine, it has uh, a few parts. So this, the box here in the middle here, this is called the console. Okay. And we have the, all these wires here. These are the cables, the gas cables, transparent here, and also the signal cable. And finally, the measuring chamber. This is full spec, therefore it has got the fluorometer. So the fluorometer that is present in here is also present in here. Okay. So it's very, very capable. Right. So how does it work? So let's say that we have our, our plan here. Right. And we want to, to understand how is the, for example, the Kevin cycle, the assimilation. So we clamp our plant. And then we set the environment that the plant receives. It can be the similar situation as what the plant has been growing in or some kind of hypothetical situation in the future. For example, we know in the future, the CO2 is increasing maybe to 500 ppm. We can change this to 500 ppm. Let's see. Um, change it to 500 ppm. Mau tolong tukarkan 400 ppm. Bukan ppm kan? Dia P, 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 PPM, oh, okay. Uh, tukarlah. Yeah. <laughs> Tukar jadi 500. Uh, 400 is the current. Hmm. But in the future, very near future, it's going to be 500. Yeah. Done. Okay. Yeah. So, not only that you can change the CO2, you can do other environmental modification as well, involving the fan, uh, the temperature, and also the light. So light, I've been setting this at 500, but actually we want to increase it. So what is meant by light quantity? This thing here. 
micromole. So at the moment, the light is receiving the quantity of 500 micromole. Maybe you want to change it to 1000? Change it to 1000? Yeah. Meaning that for one second, um, 1000 micromole of light is received by the plant. And that is light quantity. What about light quality? This machine can also change the light quality, which is this bit here. Maybe change the red to 85% um, Oh no, 80% and the blue to 20%. So light quality, we can see it in the form of color. Okay. Yeah. And then we can keep it. For it, for it can keep it at 20%. That's fine. Yeah. So why, why only two, two lights or three lights? Because these are the two main color that is used to run the photo system in, in the chloroplast. Other colors are used as well, but not as much, very minimum. This is in the most uh, spectrum, okay? Right, it's pretty much like there are many foods on earth, but not many food that can make you happy. Some food can make you vomit, right? Mm -hmm. huh. So you pick the food that makes you happiest the most. Right, okay. So we can climb here. We can reopen again. So you want to see, see here? Why is it pink? Two color, blue plus red. You got pink. So in in the sensor here, maybe you can Yep. There are many uh, four types of light in here. So you can use the light to trigger photosynthesis or lights to trigger electron transport or lights to clear chlorophyll from electrons. So there are many kind of lights. Okay. So you can clamp. You see the springy thing in the middle? That's the thermocouple. So thermocouple is used to measure la, um, temperature. Temperature. So we clamp it and then we look at the screen. So when we look at the screen, screen, yeah. So this is the reading of the screen. So the screen is telling the current estimation is uh, adjusting because we just you know, open the chamber, we change the light, we change the CO2. So at the moment, minus 32, it means um, CO2 releasing is more than CO2 taken into the cell, right? So meaning that respiration is dominating, photosynthesis not dominating. But with the progression of time, because we have increased light and CO2, photosynthesis will dominate. The moment photosynthesis dominate, estimation will become positive like this see become positive now what about the somatoconductor g s w g is the universal sign for conductance s stands for stomata w stands for water stomatal conductance to water which is the what color is that green green and that is the measure of it so it is positive if it's positive meaning that the stomata is actually opening how do you know it's opening? Look at the green bit. It's going up. We need that somata opening. If it goes down, somata closing. If it's stable, somata not kind of um in, or um they are at equilibrium. Mm. On on a piece of leaf, there are maybe two million of stomata. Not all stomata open and close at the same time. Mm. Some are closing, some are oh. uh, opening. Some don't do anything at all until needed, okay? Mm. So we call it at equilibrium if, if this becomes straight, the green line. Yeah. For the assimilation also, it becomes straight as well. Right. Let's do a little experiment. The light reading now is 9 point, sorry, 9, uh, 1000. We set it at 1000, right? Will this photosynthesis increase if we give more light to it? So we can change it from 1,000, maybe change it to uh, 1,200. Let's see whether, whether the photosynthesis increase or not. Don't, don't forget to water your plants. That's very crucial. Right. Yeah. So we go back to the measurement tab. Pay attention to the um, purple line. It's going to take some time. 
um, I think this is a shit plant. If you are working with the real tropical plant, plants that are exposed to the sun, that's gonna be more responsive. So we expect the photosynthesis to increase, but it's not increasing, it stays around two. So that's actually a physiological phenomenon. Why is it? I've given you more light. Shouldn't you increase your photosynthesis? Yeah. So there are a number of physiological reasoning for that. Partly maybe some of the Rubisco activists is not yet activated. Yeah. Rubisco needs to activate, get activated first before it can does the job. Yeah. Or maybe the light is already too much. Yeah. Because this is a shade plant. And usually shade plant is actually around maximum 1000 micromole. The moment you give something beyond, it's going to cause what we call as photo inhibition or photo bleaching. Yeah. Seperti pergi ke pantai, tak pakai sunblock. Hmm. Kemudian, lepas tiga jam jadi Udang bakar. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, so ini cuma untuk um, Kelvin cycle. Okay. Macam mana pula kalau nak tahu fotosistem, kesihatan fotosistem? Ah, itu kita boleh gunakan ini. Kita gunakan ini. Jadi ada dua daun. Boleh kita turn on kan? Ini adalah fluorometer slash porometer. Ada daun yang sudah light adapt, ada daun yang dark adapt. Kedua-dua ni akan bagi bacaan efficiency uh, fotosistem yang berlainan. Mari kita lihat daun yang sudah di... Oh, cantik yang dia buat. <laughs> Siapa buat ni? Sayang nak buka. Tolong buka kan? Dia semangat artistik yang tinggi. Bukan otomatis. Otomatik or manual? Otomatik tak apa. Oh, dua. Dua bungkus seperti kerupuk di bungkus. Ini bagus, bagus, bagus. Student, student A ni. <laughs> kenapa kenapa kita bagi dia tak uh, ada uh, tutup dia? Okey, mari ambil. Oh, basah. Lap dulu. Basah dia transpirasi hmm. malam. Kadang-kadang bukan, bukan transpirasi. Dia gutasi. Gutation. <laughs> gutasi. Transpirasi airnya keluar ikut stomata. Gutasi airnya keluar ikut hydatot. Lubang lain. Okey. Ah, mari kita tengok berapa bacaan fotosintesis. Daun ni sudah semalaman digelap. Mari tengok berapa. 0.71. Okey. Okey, ingat ya bacaan itu. Ah, jadi kita tengok yang sudah di light adapted. Di, di sekitar ini. Sini? Ah, ya. Sepatut. Ah, nampak tak berubah? Kerana um, daun yang sudah dah adapt itu bersedia untuk buat kerja sebab dia tidak bekerja lagi. Seperti baru masuk kerja pukul 8. Kan gembira, kan tak stres, senyum, makeupnya masih utuh lagi. Kan Ini sudah bekerja lama. Kan Jadi efisiensi sudah berkurang. Ini sudah kira uh, sudah jam 3. Kan? Boleh ngantuk lah. Ya, ngantuk. Gado-gadonya sudah dua pinggan. <laughs> <laughs> Jadi kita, keadaan itu boleh dibuktikan oleh mesin ini. Ke Keberkesanan penggunaan cahayanya berapa? Sebab kita tidak tahu cahaya yang dapat semua sama kan? Kita tidak tahu pokok ini guna atau enggak. Jadi dia boleh bagi tahu, Okey? Tetapi, kita juga hendak tahu cahaya yang tiba di permukaan daun itu apa bacaannya. Boleh gunakan alat ini. Okey. Ini mari kita tengok. Ini luar ini lampu warna apa? Putih kan? Putih kan? Betul ke putih? Dalam semua cahaya mesti ada satu warna dominan. 
Jadi mari kita lihat. Um, siapa nak buat? Tak cukup tanah eh? Nak pegang. Okey. Mungkin dekatkan sikit dengan sumber cahaya ni supaya dapat ini. Di bawah ini. Okey. Okey, tunggu sebentar. Dia ambil warna cahayanya. Sudah keluar? Ya. Okey. Ha, jadi, cuba lihat. Itu cahaya putih itu sebenarnya jangan tertipu. Warna yang banyak di dalam itu sebenarnya dua warna. Hijau juga biru. Dia beritahu kan? Jadi, ini adalah peta spektrum. Dia beritahu. Nisbah warna bermaksud kualiti cahaya. Ada ada cahaya merahnya berat, birunya kurang. Ada cahaya semua sama banyak. Contohnya cahaya matahari. Ini cahaya lampu kan? Kita tengok di luar ini, apa bacaan cahayanya? Kita tengok di PPFD. Jadi antara 400 ke 700 nanometer, itu bacaan cahayanya sekitar 6 mikromol. Sangat rendah kerana ini cahaya uh, dalaman di, di, di kantor. Okay. Untuk warna biru sekitar 1 mikromol, warna hijaunya 3, warna merahnya 1. Jadi yang, yang paling banyak di dalam warna pelangi itu warna hijau. Jadi lampu yang kita tengok ini dominannya sebenarnya warna hijau. Betul atau tidak? Pulang kembali ke sini, tengok kembali spektrumnya. Betul tak hijau paling tinggi? Tengok? Yeah. Hijau paling tinggi. Ya. Tenaga matahari macam mana? Ha, mari tengok. Kau boleh tak berikut? Jauh? <laughs> Oh tak sampai ah. Ah, ah, kabelnya. Ah, ah, tolong ambil, tolong ambil mataharinya. Tolong ambil mata. Ah, cahaya cahaya pun selalunya biru. Selalunya biru yang berat. Apa beza eh uh, VS2 di sini dengan Ah, itu sebenarnya nak nak nak, tanya, nak, nak ada benda nak cakap tu sebab um, saya tengok file dia hmm. cara dia kira lain dengan yang ini. Hmm. Sikitlah sikit ada 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 yang tak sama macam file dia ada FVFM hmm. tapi dia ni tidak ambil. Di dalam Excel ni ada. Iya ada. Ya. Ambil. Jadi adakah settingnya kurang betul ke? Kalau oh, belum diupdate ni masih versi awal. Mungkin 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 dia tak upgrade. Tapi tapi Excel ni ada tak apa nanti boleh tengok. Hmm. So um, untuk 5PS tu kedua-duanya sama saja. Itu dia memang formulanya. Satu tolak FS hmm. FS tu steady fluorescence hmm. Dibahagikan dengan Maximum fluorescence ketika lamp Sudah light adapt okay. FM tu maksudnya Maximum fluorescence hmm. Yang atas itu maksudnya light adapt hmm. uh, Terus Kalau uh, ini kan kita Pakainya langsung Kalau di sini menggunakan seperti apa? Um, yang ini Harus flash Dan Ini pun ada flash juga ada. ada, ada flash. Ada flashnya. Flashnya di sini. Flashnya ada di fluorometri. Sekejap. Aku pun lupa kat mana. Ya, saya beda versi ni kan. Computation. Sekejap ya. Ni, fluorometri yeah, options. Uh, Ini jenis pilihan dia. Sekejap ya. Where is the result of fluor fluorescence that we usually find? Kat sini. No, I think the cut. It should be No, nope, not that. Yes. Selalunya ini dia punya result. Mm -hmm. Dia punya kawalannya tu di sini. Mm -hmm. um, measuring. Mm -hmm. Jadi flashnya itu di sini mm -hmm. selalunya. Yes, yeah. Tadi ah, flashnya itu. Mm -hmm. 10 ribu. Ini pun sebenarnya boleh pergi sampai 16 ribu. Mm. Ikut spesies pokok. Sekurang-kurangnya 8 ribu. Uh, uh, ini ada orang yang sudah uh, tolong tadi. Cahaya matahari seperti tiada dominan semua orang sama banyak kerana cahaya matahari itu datang dari luar bumi bukan dicipta manusia manusia tak mampu buat cahaya macam ni tak mampu ya tinggi semua kan ya apa, apa bacaannya pula mari tengok u uh, cukup tinggi 1440 ini kalau di sawah padi pukul 9 10 pagi dapatlah jadi Tumbuhan yang hidup di dalam 1440 mikromol, tumbuhan itu akan menjadi tumbuhan suria. Sun plant. Sun plant. Okay. Alright. Okay. Um, 
So cara ringkasnya um, itu saja. Adakah ini boleh buat? Ini pun boleh buat juga. Um, mari mari kita buat satu. Uh, buka ni. Buka ni. Tadi kita gunakan fluorescence dengan alatan fluorometer. Alat ini pun boleh juga fluorescence. Ya, aku cakap macam campur aduk lah. Di, di Malaysia dia memang macam, macam itu. Dia ADHD. Tak boleh nak fokus. Hmm. Okay. Lapkan Besok dia perlu Apa itu? Klorofil content kena guna alatan lain Tapi ini pun boleh juga um, kesihat, Kesihatan klorofilnya boleh juga Namanya Klorofil A fluorescence boleh. Nak sedang nak dibuat. Nak dibuat. Jadi kesihatan klorofil boleh juga diukur dengan alat ini. Nama parameternya FV over FM. Sekejap ya. Sekejap. Sekejap. Tutup lampu dulu. Lampunya kena tutup dulu. Okey. Lampunya kena tutup. Kemudian dia punya ini modulationnya on. Okey. Jadi daun ini sudah dibiar gelap semalaman. Jadi kita sekarang pergi ke floor options ya satu satu semua betul. Station program. Yap. Ah, ini sudah buka file belum? Ya, dah dah. dah. Okey. Sekarang ini kita nak lihat kesihatan klorofil A-nya. Kalau klorofil A-nya sihat, dia mampu tangkap cahaya sebanyak-banyaknya. Chlorophyll will be able to capture the most of light particles. So, at least must be able to capture 80% of the light particle given. The machine knows how much light does it give. And then the machine will measure how much the leaf has managed to capture. So, we're going to see now. Bapak boleh ke sini supaya orang boleh nampak. Atau ini pusing? Ini pusing. Uh, ini simpan yep. right. Jadi itu bacaan Cuba tengok berapa bacaan daun ini Seperti yang saya katakan Sekurang-kurangnya 0.8 Bermaksud daripada Misalnya 10,000 zarah cahaya yang diberikan 8,000 ditangkap ke dalam klorofil A Hmm. Baru tangkap ya, belum guna hmm. Baru tangkap, belum guna So macam mana kita nak tahu dia guna dia guna atau tidak ha, Itu kita pergi ke bahagian dua Ya uh, Iaitu bahagian light adapted Light adapted Ini kena buka lampu lah On Tapi selalunya ambil masa sebenarnya Tapi katalah kita guna, tadi mana lift yang dah guna Ini kan Ya yep. Ya, buka Kata kalau ini daun yang sama Sebab ni, sebab kita tidak ada masa lama Untuk dark, uh, light adaptkan dia Okay Okay, mari kita tengok Sebentar ya Okay Bagi dia stabil sekejap Kemudian kita boleh tekan dia flash lagi Untuk lihat efficiency photosystem 2 Maksudnya tadi dia sudah tangkap 80%. Dari 80% ini, berapa pula digunakan untuk menjalankan fotosistem? 8,000 zarah cahaya yang tumbuhan tangkap itu bukan semua boleh guna untuk uh, uh, elektron transport. Ada sedikit yang akan ter, terbuang kiri kanan. Okay. Selanjutnya kita tunggu sampai ini positif. Light sekejap ya. Eh tak menyala ni. Tak menyala ni. 
<laughs> Sudah on lah. Kenapa satu? Seribu patutnya. Ah, masalah teknikal. Okay. So bagi sekejap, bagi dia naik sekurang-kurangnya dia positif. Jadi apa 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 expectation untuk kita lihat? Sepatutnya bukan bacaannya 0.8. Dia sepatutnya lebih kurang. Okey, sudah boleh kan? Jadi kita tengok sekarang. Kita jalankan sekali lagi untuk lihat bahagian ini. Light adapted. Maksudnya lampu sedang pasang. Berapa bacaannya? Unlock kan? Ya, yep. jadi ini bacaan sekarang. Jadi dia keluar semua itu. Jadi kecekapan fotosistem duanya adalah kira-kira uh, kurang, sangat rendah. Kerana daun ini kita tidak tidak uh, light adapt betul-betul. Dia ada satu lagi ke ukurannya, phi CO2. Hmm. Untuk setiap um, unit um, CO2 yang di, untuk setiap unit cahaya yang ditangkap, berapa unit um, CO2 yang diasimulasi kecekapan phi CO2. Jadi ada dua jenis kecekapan di sini. Phi PS2 memberitahu kecekapan fotosistem. Phi CO2 beritahu kecekapan Kelvin cycle. Dengan menggunakan teknik fluorescence. Yang di permulaan tadi tidak guna fluorescence, kita guna gas exchange biasa saja. Jadi ini lebih dalam. Tak apa sih pula? Ah ini hmm, ini kalau orang weak science dia sukalah. Kalau ada produk um, apa tu? Herbicide Hmm. Untuk tahu mechanism of action Kita nak tahu Harbisa itu dia putuskan alir aliran elektron di mana hmm. Ini boleh guna okay. Tapi ini selalu uh, ceritanya panjang Kena 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 prep dulu Alright Okay Okay uh, Itu sajalah kot demo um, Ada soalan ke? Ada soalan ke? Tapi ada sesi lain kat belakang Nak pergi? <laughs> Moder, moderatornya ada soalan ah. <laughs> su, 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 Sudah buka warung baru di belakang Kalau <laughs> ya. kita bisa ngukur fluorescence Benih apa itu? Yang tadi, yang benih tadi Oh, oh, oh. Yang, yang, yang ini Ini untuk, untuk lebar daun Tapi untuk, untuk duit boleh Duit kertas Eh, untuk ini kita hmm. kita gunakan alat bukan alat ini dia hmm. alatan kamera kamera fluorescence kamera kamera fluorescence kerana oh. dia 3D hmm. ini satu lapis saja 2D apa saja ini ada tepi kan oh. ada lonjongnya oh. ya yeah. yeah. tapi untuk untuk daun untuk duit boleh untuk uh, untuk daun, duit kita fluoresce juga waktu malam uh, ya yeah. hmm. okey apa jadi <laughs> Moderator. Ah, moderator. Moderator. Tutup sekejap warung. Sini. <laughs> ah, jadi ah, itu sajalah untuk untuk um, demonstrasi. Ada soalan ke ke macam mana? Ya. Hmm. Baik. Uh, mungkin dari Bapak Ibu ada yang ingin masuk ditanyakan silakan Bapak Ibu. Berat gila benda ni. Apa itu? Penggunaan lingkun, apakah laju fotosintesis bisa diukur pada dalam yang sedang dipotong? Bo uh, boleh, boleh. Caranya adalah, saya tunjuk. Caranya adalah, uh, ambil pokok ini yang tinggi ni. Pokok sini. Saya tunjuk cara dia. Boleh? Bukan boleh, bisa-bisa. <laughs> Caranya adalah katalah pokok itu terlalu tinggi lakornya saja sudah 20 kilo mau terbang macam mana ke atas kan <laughs> Jadi katalah daunnya tinggi kita boleh potong bawa ke bawah tapi kena cepat sikit Ulang kejap Ada gunting? Ke tak ada? Ke tak ada tak apa? Um, tisu? Tisu dengan air Air, air, air biasa saja <coughs> Jadi boleh ambil, katakanlah daun yang hendak diukur itu ini Jadi kita boleh ambil satu dahan ini Putuskan dahannya Sekejap. Basahkan dulu tisu Basahkan dulu Lagi 
Ya. So ambil dahan ini. Kan. Buang, 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 buang. Letak dalam tisu. Yang ada basah. Kemudian cepat-cepat ikatkan. Kalau ada parafilm lagi bagus. Ya. Yep. Jadi ini boleh tahan uh, 30-40 minit. Jadi ambil ini. Masukkan dalam ini. Ha, boleh juga. Ha, kan boleh? Ya. Dah dapat bacaan. Ha, menjawab soalan ke? Jawab lah kan? Nah, ha, itu, itu caranya. Boleh. Boleh. Hmm. Ada lagi soalan? Apakah morfologi daun mempengaruhi aktivitas alat daun kecil, daun berlobang? Iya, iya. Da daun yang beralun itu surface area-nya lebih tinggi. Jadi sinaran cahayanya akan kena lebih kepada banyak klorofil. Jadi lebih banyak klorofil, lebih banyak tenaga terhasil, ya, lebih laju Kelvin cycle-nya. Oh, ada ni. Tak ingat. Tak <laughs> um, morfologi daun memainkan peranan dan juga umur daun. Umur daun itu untuk fotosintesis jangan ambil daun yang terlalu muda. Ini caranya adalah bila kita lihat ini kan cara nak pilih daun sangat penting. Yang paling hujung di pucuk ini jangan ambil. Ini bukan daun, ini primordia. Yang kedua ini daun tapi masih belum matang. Jadi kita ambil daun yang ketiga selepas itu. Tiga, nombor tiga sampai nombor lima. Jadi kalau tiga ini sudah nampak elok, boleh ambil. Kalau tak elok, nak pergi nombor empat. Nombor empat ini sudah nampak sempurna, besar. Jadi ambil yang ini. Kenapa tak boleh ambil daun yang tua? Senesen. Bila senesen, uh, klorofil sudah pecah. Jadi bacaan ini tidak betul. Uh, jadi ada kesan. Uh, kena pilih betul lah. Ya. Yeah. Ya. Ada lagi? Tadi saya dah ambil potong katanya harus pakai apa pakai tisu? Tisu uh, ada air. Oh, ada air. Ada air. Ah, jangan dengan mati dia segar 30 40 minit boleh. Okey, harus harus jaga kelembapan. Iya, iya. Ya. Ya. Bagaimana kalau pelepas sawit? Um, uh, pelepas sawit it, tak boleh guna tisu. Dia kena guna um, <laughs> di, di, di Malaysia pun orang tanya, tanya soalan tu <laughs> Triknya adalah Kena cari vials Vials Masuk celup di dalam vials Lepas itu um, Ya, letak sikit gula Untuk kawal Osmotic pressure Supaya air air dari dalam Daun tidak keluar Air dalam daun Daripada luar saja masuk dalam Bagilah daun, kamu sahabat saya tunjuk <laughs> Boleh, boleh, boleh Semua semua pokok boleh buat Semua pokok boleh buat Kecuali, kecuali, kecuali Pokok sayur, janganlah sawi Nak potong kenapa? Pergilah kat pokok tu Sawi jangan dipotong Kerana dia herba yang umur 4 minggu, 5 minggu Sistem vaskularnya tak matang Kalau kita potong Nanti dia jejaskan uh, pressure dalam daun. Ini tak apa, ini sudah keras. Kan? Kalau kita potong pun, okey. Okey. So, potong itu kalau pokok itu sama ada tinggi ataupun pokok itu sudah keras, okey. Kalau pokoknya masih muda, jangan. Okey, ada lagi? Saya ada pertanyaan. Ada saya. Saya pertanyaan. Ya, baik. Ya, baik. Ya, baik. Ya, ya. Aku hati. Uh -huh. Aquatic plant. Uh -huh. Oh, kita aquatic plant. Apa itu aquatic plant? Yeah. Ya, kita ngukurnya ini dimasukkan ke situ. Oh, atau? kita aquatic chamber. Uh, ada dia ada lekor ada aquatic chamber. Oh. Aquatic plant jenis apa itu? Uh, teratai seroja. Ah, uh, ya yeah, teratai. Kalau teratai, uh, setting mungkin kena tukar sikit sebab teratai stomatanya hyper stomatos. Dia kalau ini hypo stomata hypo maksudnya stomatanya di bawah oh, sahaja. Ya. Kalau teratai seroja stomatanya di atas saja. Kena beritahu kepada mesin. Hmm, ini ya, beritahu ya. nanti dia akan masukkan di dalam equation. Hmm. Oh, tepat. Ya, ya, ya. Jadi betulkan equationnya dan keringkan bahagian bawah itu juga. Jadi kena ambil lah teratai itu. Kena ambil, kena ambil. Teratai tak apa tahu sebab 
uh, dia susah layu. Ya. Yeah. Kerana di dalam trailer itu ada ada lubang banyak. Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Force. Jadi boleh, boleh, boleh. Boleh. Ya. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Ada yeah. lagi? Uh, sudah cukup sepertinya atau mungkin dari Bapak Ibu ada yang ingin ditanyakan langsung silakan Bapak Ibu. Uh, dia, ada soalan sini, sekejap, sekejap, <laughs> ikut urutan <laughs> ya, ya, ya. Kalau kita pakai chamber uh, 6x6, 6x6. Ya. Uh, hasil asimilasi itu berbeda, apa ini perkalian uh, ya. Jadi uh, betulkan lift area ya, lift area nya, boleh betul di sini ya. um, Constant Nah sudah, dia, dia kejap Dia sudah letih, ah sini <laughs> Dia kena di belai-belai Baik, baik, baik Dan Tiga butir Innova Kijang Baik, baik Oh tak mau juga <laughs> Dia boleh tukar kat sini Kita boleh tukar dia punya Ya, tukar uh, area Area Kata, Lift constant tu, tukarkan area nya uh, Jadi Ya yeah. Jadi tak kisahlah daun tu besar mana Asalkan dia dibetulkan jadi okey saja. Kita tak mau. Oh boleh dah. Nah. Ah, satunya tukar di sini. Ya, hmm. ya. 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 Okey. Ada soalan tadi? Apa lagi? Sudah. Ah. Okay. Tadi ada lagi ke? Oh, sudah, sudah. Sudah, sudah. Okey, okey. Sudah, sudah, sudah. Okey. Sudah habis. Baik. Eh, uh, okey kalau waktunya juga dari sudah hampir selesai sana. Eh, uh, terima kasih Bapak Ibu uh, yang telah mendengarkan eh uh, <laughs> uh, pada kuliah uh, pada pagi ini uh, mungkin langsung saja uh, ke sesi selanjutnya yaitu penyerahan sertifikat yang akan disampaikan oleh uh, Pak Edi uh, Pak Edi kepada Apple silakan Pak Edi pada sini ya. Sertifikat kepada partisipan ke? Uh, for, for, for the speaker? I think for the speaker. Uh, you lah. Oh, okey lah, okey lah. Boleh lah. Okey, Bapak. Terima kasih. Okey, okey. Okey, terima kasih. Oh. Ini Okey, terima kasih, terima kasih. Yey. Dapat. Dekat Malaysia tak ada siapa nak bagi. Mau bagi mana? Apa sih nak bagi? Ya, kamera fotografi itu kita punya enggak link Korea atau kamera kena tengok bahagian bioscience dia. Mungkin ada. Laiko Laiko ini, Laiko itu kan ada division. Division bioscience dia. Ah uh, ini by division oh. gas exchange uh, ah <laughs> ni uh, environmental <laughs> environmental mungkin bagi saya mungkin ada tapi saya Lagi. tak pasti kena, kena yes. tengok bisa ke depan lagi oh souvenir oh ada lagi baik oh. oh apa ini wayang kresna wayang, wayang kulit kresna apa ya namanya enggak tahu pasti ya 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 oh ya Oh, ada tulisan dia. Nanti saya main lah waktu malam. <laughs> pasal pasal lampu flores yang di belakang. Oh, iya, iya. Oh, iya. Terima kasih banyak. Okey, okey. Okay, okay. Selamat. Okay. Uh, Jadi selanjutnya kepada perwakilan uh, dari Menteri Utama Analita. Ah, pergi, 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 pergi. pergi. Ay, pergi cepat. <laughs> Oh beam tag. Okey okey okey. Bimbingan tag. Ya, baik, terima kasih kepada Prof Edi yang telah menyampaikan uh, sertifikat dan kenang-kenangan pada pembicara dan uh, perwakilan dari PT Utama Analisa Perkasa. Uh, mungkin sudah di penghujung acara kita pada siang hari ini. Terima kasih kepada Bapak Ibu semuanya. Uh, saya ingin terima kasih kepada Bapak Ibu. Kalau ada pertanyaan, mungkin bisa dilayarkan langsung ke Tuan uh, Muhammad Azmin Yapa dan juga kalau uh, ditanya-tanya tentang likor, ada 
ada atau positif beli mobil yang dibuat di ini institusinya itu bisa langsung uh, nanti kontak uh, di unit aman dari dan perkasa ya sebagai distributor impor di Indonesia uh, itu mungkin itu saja terima kasih bapak ibu semua yang telah hadir di zoom pada siang hari ini kami dari Departemen Ekonomi dan Kultura mengucapkan terima kasih atas kehadiran bapak ibu semua dalam uh, hadir dalam acara di tek pagi yang ke tujuh Kemudian bisa memberikan uh, manfaat bagi kita semua, khususnya penelitian-penelitian uh, yang mendukung mendukung penelitian-penelitian di bidang uh, fisiologi. Uh, saya sekaligus uh, MC dan juga moderator untuk uh, diri. Uh, terima kasih. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat siang semuanya. Terima kasih Pak Dede. Nanti kita akan Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Oh. <sighs>